Well, welcome everyone to the Open e webinar. Today is February 26, 2013. My name is Todd Maxwell, and we are going to be talking about storage solutions when the RAID array halts the system while booting. Uh, one of the main causes of this is we had some cases in about a month ago that two of them back to back were customers. Basically, when they booted up the system, they had a reboot, they had some issues with their array. And what happened was it did not fully boot past the 59%. So we're going to talk about how to get around that, uh, what do you do, and also some resolutions so that way you can diagnose your RAID array and also see if there's any drives have failure or if the array itself has issues. So we're going to go through the 59% pass issue. Uh, we're going to verify the RAID array's health. And then what we're going to do is do the bootloader. Uh, this is the option to fully boot in rescue mode. And I'm going to show you the command how to do that in your boot options. Once we boot up, then we're going to create another volume group and then set that volume group as the default volume group. And then, of course, reboot and run the repair file system. This will help you to keep the system uptime better in case those late hours happen when the system is down. This is what you typically see when the system boots up and it is halting at 59% and it stays there. What's happening is, is that DSS is dependent upon that volume group to be up. Well, it'll stay at 59% and now I'm going to show you how you can get around that. So let's go ahead and start the first session of this is that what we're going to do is simulate what I have here is a DSS in like an IPMI. I'm using the Intel and I'm using a Java viewer. And so what's going to happen is when you boot after post the power on self test and you drop down the system because you're stuck at 59% and you reboot it again, what you want to do is go past the select version type here. And of course, you're going to see where the system is going to continue and it'll basically uh, go right into the select version. Here you can select a tab and start it. So what we're going to do is see if we can get this going and let's use the software keyboard and try to start this and enter it. And it looks like what we're going to have to do is restart the system. And let's get that going. So what we're going to do is go into the launch console. We're going to log out, log back in, and here I'm using the integrated BMC web console tool. So this is really helpful, especially you could use IPMI with the, um, with the Super Micro as well. So we're going to select the remote control and launch console, and you give this about a few seconds. So this loads up and you'll be able to get into the screen. So here we will select the version. It uh, goes into the next section, which is going to be in to select architecture. Now we select the tab key. So this will now be able to get us into the functions. Looks like I'm having getting stuck here. So just give me a second. We'll go back and redo it again. Okay. Let's close this one out. Bear with me, sometimes it does get stuck and I've noticed that. And that's nothing I could really do other than try to force this. So let's get this boot process up. Okay, so it looks like I need to, let's try this one more time. Let's clear it. Go to the launch console. Okay, so what with this that got me stuck right here, so we're going to let this boot up as it is and we'll come back to it and we're going to drop it down and go right after post. Uh, something must have gotten, you know, flipped up on it and that can happen sometimes I've noticed with the uh, Java viewer. Java is always not the funnest that I have to deal with, but in this case we're going to have to let it ride and jump on to the process of the boot and we'll just go on and go ahead and talk about it and come back to this where we'll go ahead and start from the beginning. So bear with me on that, it does happen. So as we go into this process, one of the first things you want to do when you do boot up a system, you know, I'm going to be using the MegaRaid Storage Manager. 
uh, here you can verify if your RAID array is optimal or not. Now using 3Ware and Adaptic, of course in Adaptic, the Adaptic Storage Manager for the 5000 series and for the new uh, 6000 series as well, uh, they have the Adaptic Storage Manager where you can verify if your RAID is optimal. In many cases we see that once the system up is that there is a fault either on the physical disks and here you can see that they're online, uh, they're optimal, they're working. Uh, some you'll see the state offline or bad. Uh, this is where you want to replace the drive and be able to go ahead and manage the array and configure it and basically do some RAID health tests. We, there is some cases where we tell people to go ahead and run the repair file system. In many cases you really don't want to do that unless you absolutely know that this RAID array or RAID arrays are perfectly optimal. So you want to make sure that the physical and the logical is optimal at its point. So here you could see I have on this one DSS V7 that I have uh, two volume groups available that I can go ahead and configure or use. So if you're running DSS V7, let's go ahead and pull up the DSS V7 that I have right now. Here I have a volume group VG00 that's related to unit S001. Uh, as you can see right here, it's VG00. And what you want to be able to understand is that in many cases we have seen where there's power outages or a power hit uh, or the drive has failed in a RAID 5 configuration. Uh, somehow it's rebuilding. Uh, we have seen cases where you're buying a bunch of drives in the same lot and so that the MTBF, the mean time between failure, a drive would fail, the hot spare would kick in, and of course that would repair the failed drive. Well at the same time, if we all know that it could take time to fully complete the uh, rebuild. And what will happen is another drive will fail due to because they were purchased at that time with all the rest of the drives. Well that could be disastrous and that can be an issue. What can happen then at which point is that the system will start bogging down due to because it's giving every resource to rebuild. Well. This is where a lot of engineers will drop down the system where the system will halt. In which case, you want to go ahead and be able to get the DSS to drop it back down. Let's go ahead and see if we're fully loaded. We are, so we're going to go ahead into the keyboard and the software key. And this is, we're going to go ahead and restart the system and do the um, rescue mode. So let's go ahead and restart the system. We're going to let that run. Um, and also what's going to be unique about this no rescue uh, equals <clears throat> the rescue mode is going to be no mount LV. So I'm going to go over that with you and you're going to see how that works. And what's going to happen is it's going to boot up the system, put that command in there and you're going to see everything loaded or what does not get loaded. But it's going to bypass that default volume group which is what you want so that way when the system comes up we can create another volume group. So we'll give that a second to reboot and let's go back to DSS and continue the uh, topics what I was talking about. So if this default volume group VG00 for some reason has an issue um, and you want to bypass it, you reboot it with the command that I'm going to show you. And then you're going to select another drive, another volume a group that has not been configured and you're going to go ahead and format that and we're going to make that the default volume group so the system will boot off of that new volume group that you created. Here you can use an SSD drive. Uh, many cases I've seen engineers that they know that they have a RAID 6 uh, and they have an extra drive on the side or if they feel very confident it's just that singular drive, it's a new batch recently purchased so they know they can depend upon that particular drive to be good, what they'll do is they'll use a hot spare um, from their RAID array that they have, they have available here, they'll take it offline and they'll tell the, uh, the RAID array to make that hot spare now basically usable as a single drive. Now here we go, we're going to get into the boot of the DSS uh, we're going to make sure that we don't want to miss the opportunity here to be able to select it. Again, this is important to have IPMI so you can remotely get into it uh, to be able to do this remotely. You don't have to be uh, at the data center at the server uh, level. You can do this remotely. So this is important for a lot of engineers that are remotely uh, not available at the server room and they can do all the management from here. 
the Intel server does, on some of the servers, you have to purchase this BMC, which is the remote management console. Uh, the newer versions of this one that I'm using is the 2612 uh, Intel server that I'm using has that it built in and also the new Grizzly Pass server that they just came out with. So here's where it's going to go countdown in four seconds and then we're selecting the version and then here is the architecture. This is where you hit the tab key at the architecture. Now let's enter the command. So we're going to run rescue underscore mode equals, and sorry about the breakup line, but I think you could see it right underneath my arrow, uh, mouse arrow right there. So rescue underscore mode equals no underscore mount underscore LV for logical volume. Hit enter, and what's going to happen, it's going to start booting up. You're going to see the loading process. We're going to watch it for a second so everybody has an understanding of what they're seeing so they will experience the same process. And of course, it's when it loads, it's, you're going to see everything in rescue mode. So you're seeing everything in almost verbose splash. So you could see what is loading and what state is okay. And as we look at this, it should be like any second right now. So just bear with me. It's hard when you simulate a lot of this stuff because you're trying to emulate as much as real time as possible. But obviously, we don't want to sit and wait for multiple boots as that can take time. So in a normal process, when you boot DSS, you would not see this. So if you want to enter some of the commands, uh, rescue underscore mode allows you to see what's being loaded. And once this boots up, we're going to see that uh, there is no system volume mount. This is when we create the new uh, volume group to make it set for the default volume group. So let's go back, talk about a couple things, and come back to this so we can go ahead and set the new volume group. So we're basically saying, okay, the first default volume group has an issue. We looked at the RAID array, and let's just say for whatever reason, this drive is faulty. You would see that error message. You would then use the um, rescue mode, uh, rescue underscore mode equals no, no underscore mount underscore LV. So that way you can boot up, and then you can start working on this as well as creating a new volume group. The new volume group, if you want, you can add, like I said, an SSD to connect it right to your SATA port on your motherboard. You make it as a single drive. You can uh, detach the hot spare from your hardware RAID array. Uh, you want to make sure, though, that you're very careful in doing that. Sometimes it's best to have two hot spares available and that you can use one as a side spare uh, for instances like this. So you could detach it and make it as a single um, unit to be available and then of course then you can use the software RAID. Here I have many drives I'm using a JBOD uh, I could select any one of these drives to be one of my volume groups. Later you can switch and delete that um, to be able to go back to your original volume group once you repair your RAID array. Very simply if I wanted to be using one of these drives and create a, a volume group uh, and make it presentable, I have the software RAID unit or my hardware RAID uh, create that RAID array, then that will be available in configuration and volume manager and volume groups. So if we click in here, we'll go ahead and see that we have the VG group here on a different server, and we can make this one right here, this single drive, uh, another volume group. So here we'll select a new volume group, we'll set the defaults to VG01, and what will happen, it will start formatting this, create a new volume group, VG01, on the left side. You'll see it momentarily. And the formatting is really formatting in our XFS file system, so it doesn't take that long. Uh, even for a very large volume of 10 terabytes or 16 terabytes, it doesn't take that long. And once this is basically shows up on the left side completed, uh, then you can, we're going to go into the console screen and create the default volume group. And here it's about ready to come up. And there it is on the left side. And then now we can set that as our default volume group reboot, and you'll be rebooting into that volume group, thus allowing you to do the next step, which is the repair file system. Let's take a look at uh, the DSS that we're, looks like we're up now. So you could see that the server down here in yellow is stating that server is running in rescue mode. This is where you want to be. 
Um, just to speed things up, I'm going to use the putty session to log in. So we'll just go ahead and restart session. And uh, by the way, to use the putty, you want to use the remote console access. So I can show you where that's at. But here, you, you want to see this rescue mode after running the command. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up the DSS on the 220 version. So this is the server that we're running in the rescue mode. Let's pull them up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the new default volume group. So we're going to select uh, a volume that is available. So we're going to go to configuration, volume manager, volume groups. And here I have one available. Now again, that could just be a single drive, uh, an SSD drive, maybe you have um, a spare drive uh, around your lab, uh, or it could be from one of your hot spares from your RAID array, though please be careful on that. Uh, I have seen an instance years ago where that did happen and it was a RAID 5 and multiple drives were dying. So make sure that you do have a drive that you can afford to lose. A RAID 6 would be okay to use and you have or extra hot spares available. Now that you see that it's now uh, VG01, we can go back into the console, do Control-Alt-X for extended tools. Now here, the first option, option 0, select default volume group. Now I see VG01 is now available. I select with the space bar, hit OK. Now this will tell me, obviously, there's going to be a reboot to be performed. Uh, your current settings will not be saved. Do not worry about this at this point in time. You can always save them, by the way, at maintenance miscellaneous. But right now, we just give you that warning just to let you know. We're going to select yes. And, of course, it goes back. At which point, the server does reboot. You're going to lose the connection. Now, to speed things up so we're not waiting for another reboot, uh, we're going to go back into the DSS on this other system. And we're going to go ahead and go ahead and log in. Let's restart 221. So duplicate session. Let's close this out. And let's spread it up so everybody can see it. Okay. Now, once the system comes back up with that new uh, volume group, you want to make sure that you run the repair file system. This is only when you know that you have verified the RAID array is at its optimal health. So you're verified that the drives are okay, um, everything is the uh, healthy in the RAID array, then you want to report, re basically perform the repair file system. Again, we're going to go into Control X in the extended tools, run the password, and run this tool right here, number nine, repair file system on logical volumes. So what this is going to do is allow you to repair any uh, broken, broken uh, links to any inodes or connection with the drives and any corruption and try to repair it. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue this. We ask for the password again because we don't want you to do this duty because this will cause a reboot. So if you have users on here, you really want to make sure that they're alerted that they will be kicked off if this is being run. This is great to be used for uh, NAS volumes or when you have a situation where your RAID array has issues um, and there was possible corruption we might be able to fix. Now notice that we're running about seven phases here. It goes pretty fast, but if you look at the phase seven down here, so what it's doing, it's verifying correcting link counts. And this will basically let you know what areas might have, or if you've got one non-contiguous spaces that are need cleaning up, uh, reference counts, directory uh, structures and connectivities. Um, so this is the tool you run, at which point it's going to force you to enter a reboot. Um, and then once you reboot, then you can go back to set it to the default volume group. And this is where we're going to force it to go ahead and enter it. And of course you see reboot. Um, which at which point, so you're right now, you're being disconnected, it's going to reboot again, and then at which point you want to be able to set back 
to make sure that your files are okay, just so everything checks out all right, then go ahead and set it back to its default volume group, which was your original VG00. Hopefully everybody understands that. I'm sorry about the uh, issue in the beginning. It does happen, as we all know, live. But when you do, these are very difficult. And by the way, you can see that the system is booting back up and what's going to happen after we set the default volume group, it's going to go to that VG01. Um, so I think you pretty much all have an understanding of it just by using the rescue underscore mode equals no underscore mount underscore LV. If you have issues about that command or, command, or if you really want to um, know more about it, there's a knowledge base article that you can type of uh, no mount and you'll be able to find that article right on our website. Uh, we do have some new releases that just came out, so please be aware that they're out for DSS v6 and v7. Thank you everybody for showing up. Take care. See you next time.